greetings this is John Hammond coming to you from Norwich it's the 10th of August 2020 just trying out this new system of recording as I'm on the move often I'm with my colleague Trevor Trevor Fox and uh, we've been traveling around Norfolk for 20 odd years <clears throat> sort of a prayer walk but in a car walking and talking on the journey heavenwards reaching out to whosoever so this is a bit of a test so if the quality is not good I'm gonna to have to see if I can improve on that but um, where are we as a church the body of Christ is the church and the more we state it the more it seems almost like a cliche until you realize there are people who think they're Christian but they don't know what the term body of Christ means in fact there's no church building for them to go to anymore. The meetings they used to go to were religious meetings and people who like religion, they, they seem to me like passive. We used to call them pew fillers and they like to sit there and have someone tell them what to do, what to think how to be well that's all very well but we we need to tell people church attendance is not good enough to get you into heaven many people who go to church as of the old days they believe that They believe they're Christian, they believe they're saved by their church going. And then when you add to that giving money, they believe they're definitely saved because they not only go to a church meeting, but they give money. They might even say amen. When the preacher is preaching, they might be saying amen, glory, hallelujah. But when you actually ask them what is their story about Jesus Christ, how did Jesus come into your life, they are at a loss to explain who Jesus really is and what Jesus has done for them personally and We are encouraged to test the spirits. Who are we dealing with? And of course, testing the spirits is you testing the person to see what comes out of their mouth is what's in their heart. Of course, if they have a testimony about God, Jesus, what comes out of their mouth about Jesus is what is in their heart about Jesus. I had a vision this morning of standing in a certain square in Norwich and um, reaching out to the whole crowd and talking about different religions and everybody in society, more or less, will agree that Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult, religion, and even if they call themselves Christian, they're not Christian. Why? Because the Christ that they have in their religion is not the real Jesus. Their version of Jesus, in quotes, is in fact a false Christ because Jehovah's Witnesses typically believe that there is only Jehovah 
and that Jehovah made Jesus at like an angel which is false doctrine and that the Holy Spirit is an impersonal force which is false doctrine as well and although the Jehovah's Witnesses have their King James Bible they also have invented a new version of the Bible the New World Translation so-called which is a false version of the Bible and if they had the Holy Spirit they would definitely know to reject that New World Translation because it is a false Bible over the years we've talked many times with Jehovah's Witnesses and whatever we say to them they are like chameleons they take it upon themselves and they say the same things so in the early days we say we're Christians and they would say well so are we and I said yeah but we're born again Christians and they would say so are we and then I would say we're filled with the Holy Spirit and so are we they say but of course they are agreeing with us just so that they can get to get their points across about who their Jehovah is and of course their Jehovah their Jehovah is not Yahweh it's um, an anglicized version of the word Yahweh which is not Jehovah is not Yahweh Yahweh of course the great I am we know Yahweh is God and we know God is Father Son Holy Spirit and this is the mystery that people cannot understand until they receive the Holy Spirit that God is one but God is like Father Son and Holy Spirit but God is one Jesus said it very simply if you've seen me you've seen the Father the field is white to harvest the, the workers are few and, and our prayer is that God will send more workers to the harvest field and where is this harvest field well all around us when Jesus said love your neighbor he means love everybody around you is like a neighbor your work colleagues wherever you go of course in a, um, a church meeting meeting of the church the person sit, sitting next to you physically is your neighbor they might even be a brother a sister they might even be a friend loving your neighbor is evidence that you do love God but then we remember Jesus said love God love your neighbor as you love yourself and there we come to the the heart of us as people do we really love ourselves are we really kind to ourselves patient with ourselves and loving oneself again is a very hard concept to understand let alone try to explain the Holy Spirit is within us each one of us who are born again and the Holy Spirit is our teacher and he teaches us he guides us into all truth he's our counselor our comforter our teacher he's the same voice as Jesus the Shepherd to many people who hear this these are just words they're just ideas almost like metaphors 
But those of us who are born of God, we understand the truth. We received the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. The truth is within us. Jesus said, if you'll receive me, the kingdom of heaven is within you. If you'll receive Christ, he brings his kingdom within you. But of course, when Jesus comes in, he wants to clean the house. And that is like a metaphor. It's an illustration when Jesus knocks on the door of the house. The knocking is a sign that there's somebody who wants to come into your life, come into your house. We're, of course, talking about Jesus Christ, the Spirit of the living God. He is knocking at the door of every heart and he wants to come in. And it's, it's not what people think, that Jesus is not some tyrant. He's not like um, the kings of this world. God is truthful to us. And when he says, I'll never leave you, never forsake you, that is the truth. But of course, if you haven't received Christ within you, if you haven't received the spirit of the living God within you by your genuine and real and ongoing repentance, then arguably you're not born of God. The Bible is clear. Those born of God will not continue to sin. It's about the heart. Do you want to keep sinning? Well, the answer is yes or no. I'm talking about your spirit. I'm not talking about your mind. I'm not talking about your emotions. I'm talking about your spirit, your human spirit. When Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more, it was a reprieve from a death sentence. He was the only one who could condemn her to death. He was the only one. But he didn't condemn her to death. She went away saved from the physical death of stoning and we never hear of her again. Will, will she be in heaven? Did she obey? Did she obey Jesus? Did she stop sinning? In this world, there is much to satisfy the human condition and I mean eating drinking addictions chemicals drugs getting a, a spiritual high different religions substances dependencies people People getting high on people. What do I mean? It's about a dependency. If you're dependent on somebody, a person, and that person is not God, then what you've effectively said is that human person is your God. So for some wives, the husband is the God. For some husbands, the wife is the god or a goddess. But then you start to understand that you're bringing in, you're bringing in other spiritual powers into your life. So the pagans, they had their own beliefs in gods, Mother Earth. 
stones, trees, spirits. But of course we are now, as, as Christ's church, the remnant, the virgin bride looking for Christ's return, longing for his return, we are obeying God to keep ourselves free from all sin. Not to be tempted, not to give the devil a foothold, not to allow the enemy into our thoughts, our feelings, our life, through what we know is the year gate, the years, the eye gate, the eyes, hands, feet. It is imperative that we as Christ followers, we follow Christ. And Christ is not leading us to sin. Christ is leading us on the path of righteousness. And, it, and it's for Christ's sake that he's in us, working in us, and through us to bring salvation to those who are in the world and walking in great darkness. It's Christ who's in us. It's Christ who reigns in us and through us. When Jesus said, if they receive you, they receive me, he was speaking the truth. And he was speaking in prophecy because he was speaking about a time that was coming when the religious authorities would not receive us as Christ's followers anymore. We're talking about the prophetic age of Christ's church, the true church, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about the body of Christ. I think we'll leave it there today, brethren. Brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. Jesus is coming. He's warned us about the state of the church. There'll be two working in a field. One will be taken, one will be left. And again, there are 10 virgins and only five virgins will be ready. We have a choice. Today we choose to serve Christ and remain in Christ. Jesus says, those who remain in me, I will remain in you. And that presupposes that Christ is in you. If Christ is in you, you know you have the hope of glory. You know you're going to heaven. You know the way to heaven, and you know the way to tell someone how to go to heaven. So, we'll pray for one another. We'll take one day at a time, and we'll take the opportunities God gives us to preach the gospel, yes. Teach the gospel, yes. Explain the gospel, yes to give an account of who we are in Christ to whosoever. The light of Christ is increasing, but equally the darkness of this world is increasing. The polarization has been taking place for the last 25 years when the Lord first told me that very truth as the darkness increases, so my light increases. John 1, that's a great scripture to read. The darkness tries to overcome the light. The darkness doesn't understand the light. People walking in darkness cannot understand who Christ is because they don't yet have the Holy Spirit. But it is for us in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to bring light to them, to bring the truth to them, 
to show them the way, the truth and the life. To open the eyes of the blind. Metaphorically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically. The power of God is at work in us and through us. We'll leave it there, brethren. God bless you, and we'll talk again, God willing. God bless.